Right then, a spalted beach vase and a very handy bandsaw sharpening tip. Right then, as I said, I'm doing a beach phase and I've seen this really handy bandsaw sharpening trick. Now, this is not my trick. I've seen it on a post on Facebook and I can't find the post again. I searched for about an hour this morning and I can't find it. I'll search again later and if I can find it, I'll leave a link below when I'm, saying that, when I'm showing you the tip. Right, the tip's going to be at the end of the video. Um, if I can't find it and somebody knows, somebody who's in the same Facebook group who's seen this video, can you drop it in a comment so I can give the, the man I seen it off the credit? As I said, this is not my tip. It's somebody else's. And it's I'd like to give credit where credit's due. Right, uh, on the lathe I have a piece of a spalted beech branch, just to save time I've chucked it up and everything else. Right, uh, I'm going to do a vase out of it, and I'm going to use one of my inserts in it. Uh, I happen to need vases for stock, and I have and I've only been doing balls lately on video, so I decided to change it up a bit. Right, so first thing I'm going to do is make sure it's smooth. Slightly high, very very slightly high. smooth on the outside to start work with uh, right now what I do want to do is I want to make sure that I'm going to put a neck on this phase so I want to make sure that I don't go thinner than the the width of the insert so I'm going to cut myself a guide first Tons around, tons around. And loads around. Now what I want to do is shape that top. Gonna go for it. Kind of a Greek look on the vase. As opposed to the normal vase shape that I do. Which is a simple vase shape. Thank you. 
base in it. So it's a cut-off base. Right. So going for the base. Shape this part. What I'm looking for is the belly of the vase to be lower than center. Whereas in the normal style ones I do, I look for the belly in the center. But for this Greek style one, I want it lower. Just going there with a detail gouge in a minute. I'll get this belly in. A detail gouge to get in here. I'm sticking with the thing of if it's pretty wood keep the shape simple and this is pretty wood do is I want to match this little embellishment here to the width of that and I'm going to be cutting crossways here so I want to leave this slightly smaller than this at the moment but when it fin when it's finished it won't be I'm looking for balance in the base Feather out to nothing. Let's get a nicer cut on that. That's not a great cut there. Let's have a look at the surface. Things that when you're using spalted wood, you can get tear out. Like you see there. Hopefully the camera's picking it up. There's a little bit of tear out along that edge that I don't like. So I'm gonna cut into the tear out, going down with that. Which should take it straight away and just give me a sharp line like that. If you ever get that where you have an edge like this and you're getting chip out, because you're cutting that way, right? the reason that it's chipping out is twofold one you're cutting into the end grain right but two just as you get to here you actually start to cut uphill so what i did there was took a very slight cut going downhill which cleaned that up beautifully in there is not the best so this is a very spalted beach and i think it might be slightly punky in places So good cuts are essential. Yeah, let's clean that up. See the way there, it's kind of punky.
much cleaner. It's much cleaner cut there. Right. You know, let's get in there a little bit. As it's not right. Now I'm going to sand and finish the outside of this uh, before I trim there because if I do that then I'm guaranteed of a clean cut there at the trim. So I'll sand this and I'll be back in a minute with the auto grip bit which is a continuation of last week. So I'll be back in a sec. Right then, this week's Yorkshire grip bit. As I said it's kind of a continuation on from last week, more of it until they've done it. Right now, after Louis uh, killed the king of the Fomorians, right, uh, gave him the let's put it the coup de grace, if you will, right, uh, and the death of Nuwada, uh he became king, right. He had shown great courage and wisdom in the years coming up to it and during battles, right? And since he was half from Orion, he was also responsible for, to put it, a peace process between the two of Danon and the from Orions, right? Now, he was a very wise and well-liked king and his reign lasted for about 40 years, according to legend. Now, during this period, no one managed to establish what was known as a public fair. Basically, a fair where things were sold, games were done, that kind of stuff. Right? Uh, these games took place on the hill of Talton. Right? They were a means of honouring Talta, Lou's foster mother, who remained and they were the games and stuff the fair remained around until about the 12th century right the place itself is no longer working as a fair but it's still there and people nowadays refer to the area as Lou's fair now this is a man the name Lou is some, something might interest some people right uh, Lou was taught so highly of that the month of August in Irish is called Lunasa and it actually comes from his name so that's just a piece of trivia for you especially if you're in Irish if you're in Irish we come in useful for a pub quiz where did the Irish word Lunasa come from and it comes from the Good, I don't know. I'm Lou. Right. Now, there was another race that existed at that time in ancient Ireland, right? And they were called the Moilesans. Now, legend refers to them as the Sons of Mill. In ancient times, when the two of Dana won the battle and took over, they had to deal with the Moilesans. Right. Now, they kicked them out, but they said that. If they ever managed to return and land on Ireland again, the country would be theirs. It was basically part of the agreement to make the Millicent leave. Right. And that was according to the rules of war. But if they left, but if they managed to get back, they could have the country. Right. Now, the Millicent withdrew and went back to the sea. Then the two they done it using magic raised a great swarm a storm to dash their ships and ensure that they lost their fleet and wouldn't be able to come back. And after that they cast another spell that kept Ireland invisible from the Millicents. Now in se around 17 this is again according to legend, about 1700 BC. Uh, the Millicent's somehow refound Ireland, right, and arrived on the shores, and they found out that until they had entirely taken over the country, apart from 
the little area that the fair bullock who hadn't fought against them still lived in. Right. Now, things had taken a twist when in fact the two of the Don thought they had managed to keep Ireland invisible to the Melisans, but somehow they'd basically fluked it and found their way back. However, they managed to find land and march into Ireland. The two of the Danon were not prepared to resist the Melisans and didn't expect them to find the land so easily. Now, a large battle ensued. And I will go into that one next week. As I said, there's loads of stories about these guys. But some of them can be rather saga-ish, they can be very long. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting, cutting it up into kind of bite-sized pieces. So that I'm not talking on here for too long. So I'll keep doing this. And I'll be back when I'm putting the wax on. And there's something slightly different about the way I'm going to finish this one. Right, I was talking to Martin, who runs, who owns Hampshire Sheen, and I was asking him uh, about vases and what I could do to help with, like when they're on the stall, people pick them up to look at them, but they always leave fingerprints. And he advised me to do my normal finishing routine, but then over the top of it, put a layer of microcrystal and wax, which will help with the fingerprints. So that's what I'm gonna do on this one. So I'll be back in a sec. Alright then, just buffing the wax off. It's even despite being punky, this took quite a nice finish. Alright, the thing about vases, they don't take all that long. And they can be really nice. And this is, if you want to compare this to my other finishes, this has micro crystal and wax on all across the top of it. And there we go. So despite it being punky, it's quite a nice finish. Right, now we'll get on with hollowing this out. Although, with me using one of the inserts, it makes Halloween very easy. So I'll set up for that and be back in a sec. Right then, I'm set up the hollow. I have the drill bit that's the exact same size as the inserts, which is makes this really easy. I have the length marked on my quill. And now it's just a case of drill it out. Yeah, we got that neck sorted out. Slightly low. And what I want to do is shape the neck out. Now this could refer back to a video I did a couple of weeks ago about end grain. And I said if I'm doing something small like back hollow, which is what I'm doing here. See, this is quite punky, so I'm going to take a finish cut on that forwards. 
just to get a decent cut on it. Much nicer cut. Right, and then I'm going to take this down to. Remember earlier on I said I wanted this the same height as this? Now I'm going to take this down to make sure the. Uh, it's the same with Doing it now has two effects. You have less of a cut to do. and it gives you a much sharper edge. Slight one. Yep. Yeah, see, nice sharp, clean edge there. Right, now I'm gonna sand that, and I'll sand the inside with the stick trick right. which is basically a piece of sandpaper on a stick that can go in and out and sand it so I'll do that and I'll be back in a sec right then just the wax off came out quite nice there's a little knot just here that looks really nice Just there, I'll have to clean it out. It's nice. Right, all I gotta do is part this off, and I'll give you a better look at it. And then we can, uh, I can show you this uh, bandsaw sharpening trick. So we'll just do that. I want a nice clean cut here. So what I'm gonna do is I will cut in, then I'm gonna cut, take a gouge and cut down to clean up the edge. Gonna underfoot. Come up a little bit more. Underfoot. Get a gouge, clean up that edge. Right. Check it. It's a clean cut. It's not. Detail gouge. Undercut it slightly. So the problem with this wood is uh, it's very heavily spalted and it's slightly punky. Yeah, that'll do it. Right, now I'll give that edge a quick sand and finish. Just this edge down here. And we get in there with a narrow parting tool. Sand the bottom of that, finish it, I'll give you a better look at it. So I'll do that and I'll be right back 
and then we got that up tip. Right, and there we have a nice little spalted beach vase. Quite happy with that. The markings in the wood are absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. So there. And the insert slides lovely in. Now, we'll get on with this tip. So I'll set up for that. I'll be back with you in a second. Right then, as I said at the start, this is not my tip. Uh, I just seen it and I thought it. Well, to be honest with you, when I seen it first, I, I just went, yeah, right. And then I tried it and I, I went, mm, that really works. Right. Uh, I seen it on one of the groups on Facebook. I went looking for the original post with the link to the original video and I can't find it. If anybody knows which one it is or has seen the post, can you please say it in the comments? Because I like to give credit where credit's due. I did, as I said, I didn't come up with this. Uh, I will look again. If I can find it, I will put a link to the original post and video here, right? And uh, below, of course, right? Now, if I'm... Sorry, I bumped the camera there. If I'm sharpening my bandsaw blade, right, I do it the way everybody does it, right? Which make sure it's safe, it's off, it's unplugged, right? And I go along with a Dremel type thing and a, and a wheel and just touch each one to get it sharp. But you can never get it as sharp as when it arrives first, right? You know the way when it arrives, when a, a bandsaw blade arrives first and you run your finger up it, your finger kind of catches in it. Whereas after you've sharpened it, it doesn't do that. This puts that really sharp catch back on. Right, and what it is is it's a diamond stone. All right, and what you do is you put the diamond stone up so that it's basically at the same angle or close enough to the angle on a tooth. Right, and you just hold it there and you spin your blade backwards and just let it bounce off your blade. As I said, when I seen this first, I said to myself, oh, yeah, like, that's not going to do anything. But what I was surprised about was it actually does. Like, I can feel that catch there now. You see the way, when I started this, I could run my finger up that blade and nothing happened. I'm putting the same pressure on it now and my finger won't move. Right? I just thought, brilliant tip. If this doesn't get out there, it's a shame. Um, as I said, not my tip. I'll see if I can find the link and stick it down below. It's a re. It really does put that factory edge back on, and it's dead handy. So if you like that video, if you got that now, if you mind clicking like on the video, and I'll see you in the next one.